Welcome to The Rock. We're excited to have you all here today. We're excited to worship. Uh, we got some really good songs this morning, some good, powerful, Jesus-loving. Um, we got new, maybe two new ones for you. Um, but yeah, so let's just open up. God, thank you for every single person who walked through here today. God, let us be nowhere else in our minds but here with you. Let us hear your word. Let us feel the spirit. God, in the first service, the spirit was pumping. So we invite that. We invite you to be open, to freely worship if you want to stand, if you want to clap your hands, if you want to shake. God, you are truly the most awesome father. And it is clearly evident in all of our lives. We woke up this morning. We're here with you. We're breathing. So many times we wake up to bad news that people have died or things have happened. But do you know what, God? Right now in this moment, we are thanking you for being free, for being able to worship you. And as we go through service, God, open our ears and our hearts to the things that are kind of hard to hear, but we know we need to hear them for our hearts to be changed. And we thank you for those moments. Amen. Here we go. If you guys want to stand, evidence.
should I fear the evidence is here why should I fear the evidence is here it's all around us why should so good to us, Father. When I feel the fear come, I won't run away, even in valleys. Your presence is enough when I feel the shaking. Oh, I will stand my ground. Oh, your presence is enough. You are with me. Father, you're for me. And fear will never conquer me. Because I belong to Jesus. I'm never alone. Never abandoned, fear will never conquer me, cause I belong to Jesus. When I feel the pressure, I won't run away, even in tension. Your presence is enough.
floods came when the wind blew i was okay you were right there you're in every step i take when the night falls where my heart is if i stumble i will not break you'll be right there you're in every step i take when the rain fell when the floods came when the wind blew i was okay you were right there you're in every step i take when the night falls when my heart aches if i stumble i will not pray you'll be right there you're in every step i take
I'm never alone. I'm never abandoned. And fear you'll never conquer me. Cause I belong to Jesus. Oh, fear you'll never conquer me. Cause I belong to Jesus. We have a new song for you, Miracle Power. Guys, if you have not seen or felt or heard God, God's miracle power, whew, I tell you what, he wants to show up today <laughs> in your lives. So as we sing this song, you know what? We're going to get funky with Jesus this morning. We're going to dance with Jesus this morning. Because if it wasn't for Jesus, we wouldn't be here. <laughs> so here we go. Miracle power. Take it away, Gene. We need lots of participation. Sing it. And I'll make 
How many know that's true? No, don't, don't sit down. We're going to do that again. We need to do a rerun of that. How many know we serve wonder working God? I don't know what you need this morning, but I know God wants to touch you. And I know God wants to change you. And I know God wants to radically change your life. And I know we're going to waste time, but let's sing it again. Ready? They maybe didn't. We didn't get the message. Sorry, we were filling the song. You're filling the song. What was the message? We got the message. We're doing it again. We're doing it again. Do, we're doing it again. Right. Round two. Stand right. back up. Come on. I want you. You guys sang it so well. We you need to do it, it so well. I want you, you to let go of whatever's holding you back. I want you, as you sing this song, realize you've got the wonder-working power. You've got the Holy Spirit living inside you if you let Him. It's by invitation, and you've got a miracle-working God that wants to radically change your life. So I want you guys just to worship. The Bible says amazing things happen when we worship. The Bible said that Jehoshaphat was against an army that was out, they were outnumbered and they didn't know what to do and Jehoshaphat went alone with God that night and God said, I want you to sing and I want you to praise. Now, when you're going to war, you don't sing and praise, you try to sneak up on your enemy. For any of you guys who are deer hunters, I'd be like, I'm praying for God to give me a deer and God's like, I want you to sing Gone in the Woods. And you're like, that scares them away, God. But when, how many know when God's working, God does things his way and our job is to obey? It says Jehoshaphat counseled with all the people and he said, guys, this might sound crazy, but we're just going to worship God and we don't know what's going to happen. It says, and when they began to sing praises, God began to move. And the more they sang, the more God moved. And the more they sang, the more the enemies turned against each other. How many could use some of your enemies to turn against each other? I'm not talking about people because people aren't your enemy. Darkness is your enemy. I'll tell you what, how many could use God just heal you right now and change your life and say, you know what, I got issues in my life. This is where it happens. When we lift up our hands and say, God, I believe in that wonder working power, it's in me, and God just do it. Let's sing it. This is for the lost and lost.
prepared and all that good stuff. But I'm telling you, God wants to do something amazing here this morning. I don't know, man, I feel God like, mm. anyone else in here ready to burst? Man, maybe it's up here. Maybe we're just ready to burst. I don't know. I don't know what you need, but I know who you need. I don't know how to fix your situation, but I know who can fix your situation. I don't know how sick you are, <laughs> but I know who is the wonder working power. You know, last week I preached that God wants to, wanted to make Israel a nation of priests. That he never meant for Israel to have a priesthood out of the 12 tribes of Levi, but he wanted all of Israel. Man, God, you're so awesome and I feel you so much. I've, if I can hold myself together, I'm going to tell you this. <laughs> when I read that last week, it literally blew my mind. When I read about Israel going to the mountain and the mountain shaking and the smoke and all that and the children of Israel saying, we don't want to hear God, we want Moses to talk to us. And I can only imagine, and all week long I've thought about that and I've thought, Garrett, what it must have, could have been like, what Israel could have been. Can you imagine being the Old Testament, how different it would have been that they all came to the mountain of God and the mountain of God was shaking, all the nations bowed before God and realized that there was a redeemer coming and there was a hope coming and what it would have looked like instead of a tribe, one tribe of Israel being the priest. Okay, that's really cool. What's that have to do with me? Because God's called us the kingdom of priests. I want to tell you something. I don't know if you're enslaved by something this morning, anger, bitterness, drug addiction, sex addiction, Whatever it is, pride, I have no clue. Financial stress, I don't know. But God wants you and I to be a kingdom of priests. God wants you and I to be a people that will be anointed of the Holy Spirit, that will go out these doors and go into the world and say, listen, I was with God. He shook the mountain and my life's changed and I'm not the same anymore. I, I, I want us to become what God has called us to be, a people of victory and a people of power and a people of anointing and a people of presence. Now, we're going to do something this morning. I left the lights down. I asked Ray to keep them down for a purpose and reason. I don't know how this service is going to go, but it's going to be cool. I don't care if I preach. really don't. I just know God wants to do something. I want you to realize something. You are a priest. If you ask Jesus into your life and you decided to follow him, not get saved, I mean follow him, you are a priest of the Most High God. I don't care if you feel like you have power, you have power in the name of Jesus Christ. I don't care if you feel chosen. Right now, some of you just had a spirit of condemnation try to grab a hold of you and say, oh no, you're not worthy. He's, he's not talking to you. You're not good enough. You, you know where you were last night. You know what you did last night. You know what you said this week. You know how you flipped out. He is a liar and the father of all lies. God is a God of forgiveness. And he's trying to keep you bound in your past so that you never get free to become the priest of the most high God that God has called you to be. But you're a priest of the most high God. God wants you to realize that. And this morning, I don't know what the person beside you need. I don't know what you need, but I know how to work it. God said, lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. So you're going to take your priestly hand that God called you a priest. You're going to lay it on somebody beside you. And we're going to pray over each other. And we're going to ask God to move in each other. And I don't know what that need is. I don't know what that looks like. I don't know how it's going to turn out. But I believe with all my heart that God is in this place this morning to radical change lives. I mean radically change lives. I'm not talking a little bit. I'm talking about amazing. If you're online watching, I want to tell you right now, if you don't have anyone to lay hands on, just take your own hand and slap in the middle of your forehead. Hard. I want you to understand that this thing we're talking about, this going to the promised land, this whole thing we've been doing, this whole church, is about changing a world. I know we have the motto, helping families changing lives, but it's more than that. It's about 
us being a light in a darkened world where we see drug addicts set free, where we see kids come from school and learn about the Bible, where we see a radical transformation. I can't change Los Angeles, but we can change Spring Church. I, I can't change Pittsburgh, but you know what? We can change Apollo and Vandergrift and Salzburg and Avonmore. And what it takes is priests to go out there and say, I found Jesus. <laughs> you see, that's why God loves working in us is so that we go out into the highways and byways when you tell them, look at me, look what God did in my life. And listen, maybe you're stuck in an addiction this morning. Maybe you're stuck in fear this morning. Fear is so prevalent in our nation right now. It's like literally we've opened up a, a, a box of demonic fear that has grabbed America where we're afraid of everything and the world is afraid of everything and, and then we're like petrified but this morning you need to get free you need to get set free by the power of God and as that hand is on someone we're going to pray and I want you to pray the Bible says lay hands on the sick and what? they will recover I know we look at it physically, but it's mentally, it's spiritually, because maybe some are sick spiritually this morning. Maybe some of you are sick mentally in your head. I know you got problems. It's all good. God said, I'm a God of a sound mind. And you got to rebuke that this morning. And as we pray this prayer, you got to realize that God, the wonder-working power, the miracle-working power is Jesus. He's the one who paid for it. And he, and he released the Holy Spirit upon this earth to radically change every believer so that we wouldn't go to it and be religious. So we wouldn't just sit here Sunday after Sunday and we get up here and go through the same thing. But that God could step in the middle of a service and say, listen, I want to work among you. I want to touch you. I want to radically change your life. I want to break the chains of darkness over your life. Father, we just pray in the name of Jesus over every person, God, that has a hand upon them, Lord. We just pray, God, for your power and your anointing and your presence, God, to flow and to move. Lord, online, through the airways, God, I don't care where it is. You are not bound by any of man's boundaries. You are not bound by any things. God, there's people here that have had, Lord, diagnoses, God, that are lies of hell that are trying to destroy them. But God, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Greater is he that lives in us than he that lives in this world. And God, we just pray this morning that God, your wonder-working power would be released in this room and your wonder-working power would move through their hands. And God, you would do a brand new thing. You said, see, I do a new thing. It springs forth. God, hell can't stop it. We can't stop it. But God, we receive it in your glory and your power. We receive that touch. We receive that anointing. We receive that presence. And God, we claim it this morning. Morning. We thank you for it this morning. We praise you for it this morning. We worship you for it this morning because you are that miracle working God. You are the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end. And we give you all the glory. We prepare a way for the Lord to work in our lives. Devil, you've lost this fight. You do not have my mind. You do not have my body. You do not control me with your lust. You do not control me with my bitterness. You will not control me with my faults. You will not control me with my past. I am free because he who the Son set free is free indeed. And I claim it this morning in the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, I loose you in my life. I loose you in my circumstances. And God, I thank you that you do a new thing in our hearts this morning. And God, we give you all the praise. Now I want you to do so. I want you to lift up your hands and say, God, thank you for moving in my life. God, I praise you for moving in my heart. I praise you for touching me. I praise you, God, that you're a God that answers prayer. I praise you, God, that you're a supernatural, miracle-working God. Oh. Because, Lord, I believe in the wonder-working power. <laughs> I believe in that supernatural touch. God, thank you for showing yourself strong in this room. Thank you for showing yourself strong in the hearts. Thank you for showing yourself strong in the lives. Lord, we'll give you the glory. We'll give you the praise. We'll give you the honor. In Jesus' name. Everyone said? Amen. Do you have it in you to do it one more time? Through all things. I don't know Jesus. if we're even going to have a message this morning. How about anyone else feel like worshiping? Oh. 
If you don't feel like worshiping, I'll tell you what you need to do. You need to come up here and get in the front because there's a lot of God right up here. I'm just telling you, just try not to block this one camera. That's all I ask. All right, we got the sides. Seriously, get out of your seat. We're going to praise God. Right after this, we're going to sing Lion. And we're just going to worship away the darkness this morning. We're just going to worship away. Come on, you can feel in this side over here. It's all good. That side over there, it's all good. We're just going to give God praise. I might even sing with you, see? This I feel like singing. For the lost and lonely. For the broken and afraid. This is for those who are hurting. Hoping help is It's on its way. In these battles of a day. They're broken right now. Fear is changing. Chasing it. Whatever trouble I am facing, I will lift my hands. I will lift my hands and say, What are we going to sing? I believe in miracle power, in a wonder working God. I am filled with the Holy Spirit. What can one?
All right, now you believe in his wonder-working power. So this is my message. Now you've got to make the way for the Lord. And that's up to you. You've got to make the valleys raise up and the mountains go flat. And that's called lion. Maria's loving me. But you know what? God's got it. Is anyone else feeling what I'm feeling? Anyone else liking this? This is called letting go and letting God, getting out of the order of what we're used to and just saying, God, whatever you want to do in our lives, God, we want you to do in your life. If it scares you, don't be afraid because it's just God. God's supernatural. He's powerful. He's awesome. He's amazing. I think this is about my all-time favorite song right now, and it's called Lion. Let's sing it.
you to get that. Some of you guys have lived in condemnation way too long. And you got to look at your past and say, it's over, it's done, it's finished, it's gone. Hey, yeah, you got that song? Huh? We can do that song. I was just saying bye to my past, but you know. <laughs> We have a baby dedication this morning we're going to be doing just a little bit. You know, they're really cool. And we have lots of babies in our church lately. We're not starting yet, so you don't have to worry about it, Bethany. Okay. No, not yet. Yeah, we're going to do another song. Sorry, we're trying to coordinate something, so... I was going to say something, but it might not be taken as a joke, so I won't say it <laughs> sometime. I'm getting a little smarter than I used to be. You know, I've been in a lot of services where God shows up, and this morning God really wants to let you know that you're not condemned anymore. Thanks for singing Bye Bye. I was thinking of that song. But... Seriously, it's cool to be in this environment, isn't it? Can I tell you something? You can experience this in your own prayer times. This is what I experience a lot of times in my prayer times, walking down a road. Sometimes I think people probably think I'm a little weird, a little crazy, but guess what? I am. I'm crazy for Jesus. But if you're dealing with condemnation this morning, you need to get over it. But here's what else you have to do. You have to stop doing what's bringing condemnation in your life. Now, God said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You've got to be willing to do that. And you have to do that with this song, Bye Bye Clutter. You've got to look at things in your life and say, you know what? This isn't worth being there anymore. I want to know Jesus more than I want to know this. And that's what God wants to do. I promise after this song, we're going to have some announcements and then we're going to do a baby dedication and I'll let you go home. Because you know what? I don't need to preach because God already preached. I like when he preaches. It's so cool. It's exciting. Bye-bye, clutter. Hey, don't start yet. I'm still learning it. All right, I'm ready. Oh! 
Back to your seats now. Yeah, we're gonna have the kids stay over there, and then after we're done with the announcements and the baby dedication, I just realized there was people online couldn't see me at all. I was just the voice. You are just a voice. Yes. So after the, the announcements and the baby dedication, you guys can just walk over to Amanda has the the checkout list. So sign out with your. With or your you can leave them there and go home. <laughs> just a thought. Tony <laughs> takes them home with him. Whatever oh, you leave behind. I we were going to take them home. No. I tried. <laughs> no. Hey, well, 
if you haven't met me yet, my name is Bethany. I'm the outreach pastor here at The Rock. Hi, guys. Have you met me before? Awesome. Good. Well, this week we had our first Bible to school meeting, and Ava was there. Wave at me. And, and while we were getting on the bus, she was like, can I give you a hug? I was like, yay, she remembers me. I was so happy. <laughs> so Bible to school is we are busing uh, the second graders that want to be in the program from Apollo Ridge here to the Rock from 1130 to 1230 every Friday and teaching them about Jesus and about the Bible. And it's so cool. So we had 17 kids this week and it was it was yeah, amazing. Um, and we're, we're praying for more. We are prepared for 30 kids, so we want at least 30 kids. So <laughs> hopefully they're going to keep inviting their friends, and it's going to be awesome. So, <laughs> Hey, I got to remind you, our mission is helping families, changing lives through the amazing love of Jesus. And that's what we're doing every week through not only Bible to School, but we have Celebrate Recovery. We have mops group, we have youth group, we have all kinds of cool things We have things worship going like on. that so that you get changed. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> um, if you are visiting with us today, I would love it if you would go to our website, yourrock.org, and fill out the little I'm new thing. And if you want to give today, which I hope you do, because it's such a blessing to give. It like is. whenever you give, God gives you so much more back in return, and it's super exciting. You can give online at the little plus sign where it says give here, or in the back, we have these little green boxes. Woo, you can put money in there too. It all goes to the same place, and that is building the kingdom of God. That's, That's right. our mission. <laughs> all the time. Yes. And then, thank you for giving very, very much, but this is what we have going on this week. Which and I ran through she real ran quick. ran through already. Celebrate Recovery, Youth Group, Mops, Bible to School. Woo. There, we got that done. That's every okay. week. Cool. And we got water baptism next Sunday. Yay! So if you'd like to get baptized, there's a sign-up sheet. You can either do the 9 o'clock or the 11 o'clock service. We're doing them in both, yes. I think, is what we're doing right now. Yep. I think I only have two people signed up. That's okay. So there's far. more coming so far. And by the way, you can always do what some people did last time in the middle of the service. Just say, I want to get baptized and get wet. Maybe bring some clothes just in case. Or go home wet. It's all yep. good. So that'll be next Sunday. And there's a sign-up sheet on the Welcome Center. If you'd like to do that, just sign up. And we love it. And we're having a church work day. Um, it's moved already. It's going to be next Saturday. <laughs> it just was let you know. Saturday, it was supposed it was to be moved. October 1st, so scratch that. We're going to do it next Saturday. September so 25th. 24th. 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 Help me out, somebody. 24th. It's the 24th. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 25th is a Sunday. Okay. Yes. Today's the 18th. Yes. Uh, and then we're having a campfire on Friday night at yay! 631. <laughs> Oh, and there's one more announcement. Danny has a quick announcement. Yeah, and I still have one more while, she be, while she's preparing. I will let you know about this one that we need your help. Um, we walked in. Actually, I got a phone call on Tuesday, and I got a phone call that I had a problem. This was my problem. How many knows what that is? That is the shelf of all the Tarani syrups in the coffee shop hit the floor and busted off all the bottles and went down over everything. Um, I originally thought we lost our cappuccino espresso latte machine and it was saved. So you just got drinks this morning and it was over a computer. Um, we had glass out in the entranceway um, and puddles, I mean ponds of sticky gooey syrup with glass through it. They're glass bottles by the way. So I think we managed to save about six. Um, we lost probably $700 of supplies. So we need to replace them if you would like all the interesting flavors that you enjoy eating and drinking and all those kind of things. Um, we threw away all the glasses, all the cups, all the stuff so no one would drink any glass today, just to let you know. So it was quite a mess. It took Rhonda and Shannon and myself five and a half hours to clean. So it was a really long process, and it's still a little sticky here and there. You may find some stick if you work the donut shop. So if you put your hand down and you can't pull it up, that's the reason why. Just let you know. Um, but we're going to do an offering on October 2nd if you'd like to help us buy stuff back. And the funny part is we just bought $300 worth of syrups, 
and that's probably what made the shelf come down because we loaded the shelf up and it said I'm done and it just gave up the ghost and let everything fall. So if you'd like to give for that and you like coffee, it would be really cool if you gave. If you don't like coffee like me, you don't care. So I don't care if you have syrups. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I care. And now, Danny, you're on. Hi. Um, this year, we're going to participate in the Diane Bear Memorial Crop Walk. It's a fundraiser uh, for not only supporting our local community, but also building, like, or donating to overseas, um, helping with like farmlands and farm animals in like impoverished countries and stuff. The uh, donations that they receive, 25% of them will go to the Apollo Food Bank. So <coughs> if anyone wants more information, wants to donate, wants to participate, be a walker, um, come and see me after service, after baby dedication, and I'll fill you in. All right, so cool. The, the date of the walk is October 2nd? Yes. Yes, and we're not doing a work day. No, the second is a sun Sunday. Sunday. I was going to say, it's a Sunday. Cool. <laughs> hey, we're going to do a baby dedication now. Baby dedications are really cool because really what you're doing is they're dedicating their child to God. It actually comes from the book of Samuel is where the first baby dedication really came from, and it's where uh, Hannah actually said, God, if you give me a child, I will bring it to the temple and let him be part of the priestly unit, and it became Samuel. He became Samuel. That radically changed the world. And from that, we have baby dedications. And Pastor Tony of the Children's Pastor, because Ben doesn't like me enough to do it. <laughs> My last feeling is hurt. I'm never talking to you again. You thought the youth were cut off before financially? You wait, you see it now. <laughs> just saying, dude, you're on Pulper Street. But anyhow, I'm just kidding, by the way, or am I? He does like me better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, Ben and your family, if you guys want to come up. So how's everybody doing today? It's good. This is actually my first baby dedication, so I have no clue what I'm doing. So, <laughs> but it's all good. Hi, guys. So they got five kids, which is awesome. I remember when my children's ministry was five kids. <laughs> and seven was amazing. And if you guys look over here right now, I think this is kind of a small day. It's about 18 to 20 kids. So... It's awesome. God's great. Um, but listen, like, you know, I just, I got to quit quote Whitney Houston for a moment because she says, I believe the children are our future and we got to teach them well and let them lead the way. We got to show them the, all the beauty they possess inside. Give them the sense of pride to make it easier. Let the children's laughter remind us of how we used to be. And, you know, she talks about giving them the greatest love of all. And, you know, I don't know exactly what she believed was the greatest love of all. But I know and I believe the greatest love of all is the love of God and love of Jesus, him dying on the cross for us. And, you know, kids are very important to me. Um, I was a kid once and uh, still am. <laughs> I have never grown up. Um, but, you know, it's so important. And we learn so much of our adulthood from what happens in our child as a kid. And that's why I love pouring into these children and love teaching them that they all have purpose. And, and that's why I do it. And I think it's great that Ben, you, and Rachel have decided to dedicate your children or child, I'm sure you dedicated all of them, or, you know, to the Lord. And, you know, that's a big step. Um, you know, and, you know, you're basically making a promise that you're going to raise your children in the way of the Lord, and, you know, not just biblically and teaching them, but you're also whatever God's will is for them, and, you know, it can be scary at times when, you know, if your child decides to say, hey, guess what, I'm called to go to Uganda, you know, or... I'm called to drop my $100,000 job to be a pastor and make, you know, peanuts. 
literally they are only serving me peanuts. <laughs> like, <laughs> and you know how to be like, God, I trust you. And, you know, that's what we want. Um, I have a scripture, too, that I wanted to read. All my little notes. All right, so it comes from Mark. Yeah, Mark chapter 10. Um, it's in verse 13. And some of the people brought children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them, but the disciples scolded them. And when Jesus noticed this, he was angry. And he said to them, let the children come to me and do not stop them because the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. And I just, I love that scripture. I also echo it when he says that we need to be like children. And, you know, at the same time, because, you know what, if you look at kids, they're very innocent. And, you know, we need to be that and open with God. And so, Ben, you are the spiritual leader of your family. And so you are the one, you know, you're the one that God's called to be the head, not the tail. And it's up to you to lead your family. Lead by teaching, lead by example. And Rachel, you're to be, you know, by his side and submit with submit to him as the Bible says. And you guys are you're you're a team. And you gotta work together this way. Not that way. There's no good cop, bad cop. Unless it's a game you're playing, where like, uh, you know, there's no dark side and light side. Ben's not Darth Vader, or maybe Rachel's Darth Vader, and <laughs> Ben's Luke Skywalker. That's probably how it happens in their house. Obi-Wan, Ben's Obi-Wan. <laughs> they have like five hour lightsaber battles in their house, so it's pretty <laughs> crazy. But, but, you know, the other thing too is God comes first, okay? And then the two of you as a couple, and then your children. You guys gotta take care of each other as a couple, and your kids. And so, now I've got some questions for you guys. Maybe it's just one. <laughs> Do you guys agree to raise this child up? And by the way, this, I should probably introduce everybody. So, <laughs> this is Ben, this is Rachel, this is Liam, this is Neil, Ross, Molly, and Maggie, I went in age order, so. Um, but anyway, do you guys agree to raise Molly up? Um, Maggie, sorry, and Molly. and Molly, and all of them, actually, <laughs> in the way of God and in his will. Good. Do you, um, now, you know, do you agree that no matter what God calls for her life, you're going to want what God wants, and you're going to support her behind that? Good. All right. Where's your family? Where's your family? Over there. Okay. So you guys, you know, you're part of this too. You're part of this amazing family, and, you know, you, you guys, it's your job as well to help them help lead their children in you know, the way God wants them to lead. And then, I'm not done. The rest of you sitting here, you're not out, you're not out scot-free either. We're all one big church family. We all love each other. We've got to look out for each other. And we're going to be like, hey, Ben, you know, you got to get your game up. Something's going on. You know, whatever. We need to step into each other's lives and be you know, supportive of each other. And, you know, sometimes it can be daunting when you get faced with somebody that says, you are the man. Like, um, it was Nathan, right? Nathan that faced David that said, you are the man. And sometimes you, it's tough to hear that, but we need to be brothers and sisters that can go up to each other and say, listen, I love you enough that I don't want you to go down this path. And, um, you know, and I love you too, Ben, you, ben and your whole family. Yeah. Aw, thanks. <laughs> we might have just gotten shut down from Facebook for that one. <laughs> right? <laughs> then we boost, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, 
Anyway, so let's just take a moment, and I want to pray for uh, Ben's family. And uh, so let's just pray. Father, we just thank you so much for Ben and his family leading them here. That, God, the plans you have for them, God, we, we thank you for them dedicating their children to you. That, God, whatever the will is in their lives, that, uh, Father, it, it is done. We ask you for the support and for comfort whenever they, they need it. That, God, you never leave their side and you remind them every day that your ways are better than our ways and that you have a great path planned for all of them. And we just praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, let's give it up for the Kreitzer family. <laughs> what? You know, I was thinking about getting baptized next week, but now that I made Pastor Terry angry, I don't know if I want him dunking me in the water. Oh, we're going to hold you down and see how long you hold your breath. <laughs> Thank you, guys. If you're new today, just so you know, this isn't our normal service. It's just really what I felt inspired in my heart that God wanted us to do. So shake somebody's hand, high five somebody, slap them in the forehead, something like that, and just love them. Make sure you take your kids home because I don't want any. All right, she wants more. God bless you. Have a great day in Jesus Christ. Hey, we're going to move these chairs.